Welcome to Thriller Recaps. Today, I am explaining the movie, Immaculate Room, explaining every scene as it happens. Watch till the end, and please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this. The movie began with a couple walking into a white room. They both seemed pleased with the space. Michael and Catherine discovered a button that, when pushed, welcomed them to the room. They were told they had been chosen to spend 50 days in the Immaculate Room and would win $5 million if they completed the task. They were also informed that if one of them left, the prize money would drop to $1 million for the person who remained. The couple appeared very excited about this. Michael started running around happily, and Catherine chased him playfully. They then hugged and lay together on the floor. Michael told his wife that it felt like they were in a dream. Catherine expressed that she was waiting for the bubble to burst, but he reassured her that there was no trick and they were lucky, so they should be grateful. Catherine saw it as a second chance for them and suggested splitting the prize money thinking it would be easier that way. When she asked Michael what he would do with his half, he said he would never think about money again. He explained that he wanted to make art and continued to talk about everything he would do with his money. Catherine said she planned to invest her share, and Michael playfully fainted. They then explored the rest of the room. They found a bed and laid on it. Michael commented that everything was white. He asked Catherine what she wanted to do since there was no TV or anything else. They walked into the bathroom but only Catherine was allowed in, as the bathroom was designed for one person at a time. They then tried to get some food, which turned out to be a white bottle containing a white liquid. Michael smelled it and said it had no scent. He drank it but wasn't very impressed. Catherine said breakfast would probably be... They looked at the room one more time before Catherine went to the bedside while Michael began playing with the walls. She told him that there was an automatic lights out at 10, and they needed to be up by 7. As they tried to get back to bed, Catherine hurt her toe and Michael tried to comfort her. He attempted to initiate intercourse, but Catherine declined, saying, he, Professor Voyan, might be watching. Michael assured her that it was dark and no one could see anything, but she still refused, saying it felt weird. The next morning, Catherine woke up, went to the mirror, and did her daily affirmation before heading to the bathroom for her bath. Mike woke up as Catherine left the bathroom and joked with her a bit. Their breakfast was still the same as what they had for dinner, which frustrated them. Mike commented that they looked like mental patients. Catherine asked Mike why he thought the professor was doing all this. He then asked if she had seen the documentary, Fame, that the professor had made. He talked about other interviews the professor had done, and how he had a lot of money. Although they had no idea why the professor conducted experiments like this, Catherine thought he was a weirdo. Two days into their confinement, boredom began to set in. Mike kept staring at the door, hoping it would open. It was already midday and Catherine tried to relax by meditating. Mike started complaining about how he hated white because it was the absence of color, a nothingness. Catherine asked him if he liked watching the clock and warned him not to focus on it too much. He confessed that he hated the clock, and she told him not to stare at it so much. Out of boredom, Mike began to make conspiracy theories and ask really silly questions. Catherine reminded him about the prize money and told him to keep his eyes on the prize. That night, Mike just stared at the ceiling until he fell asleep. At seven o'clock in the morning, they were woken by the alarm. Catherine did her usual daily affirmation before sending Mike to the shower. The third day went quite well. The couple spent more time with each other, trying to ease their boredom. The following days passed quickly as they continued managing their boredom and repeating the same routine. They had now spent nine days in confinement and continued this way for days, repeating the same activities over and over until they had thirty-eight days left. Days went by, and the couple continued to endure their confinement but frustration began to set in. With only 23 days left, the boredom had already started to take its toll, and Mike was beginning to lose his sanity. He saw a little bug on the ground and went to talk to it. He picked it up and told the bug that there was nothing in the room, even though it was called the Immaculate Room. Catherine asked who he was talking to, and Mike introduced the bug as Cluey, saying it had no clue where it was. Catherine told him the bug wouldn't last. Mike promised to take care of it, and poured some of their food on the ground for it to drink. The bug refused and Mike admitted that the food was terrible. They were then told that the food was only for contestants' consumption, which annoyed Mike a bit. He picked up the bug and asked if he could be let outside because the bug would die in the room. When no one responded, Mike went over to the big red button, saying he didn't want to leave but wanted to set the bug free. Catherine warned him that if he pushed the button, he would be out. Mike was reminded that their prize money would drop to $1 million if he left. Catherine tried to remind him that it was just a bug. Mike mocked her, saying she had no compassion for animals, which led to an argument. Catherine felt he was mocking her for not being vegan. As she moved to the other side of the room, 
she accidentally killed the bug. The next morning, Mike told Catherine he wanted to take a treat for $100,000. She tried to dissuade him, but he wouldn't listen. He was given a green crayon, and Catherine, seeing this, felt annoyed. Mike began to draw on the white walls to add some color to the room. Catherine went to him and asked if he could draw her. He agreed and started to draw, saying he would try to capture her essence. Catherine asked for a portrait, but Mike said he didn't do that. She then decided she was no longer interested and stood up. Soon, the crayon finished, and with Mike having drawn all over the room, he began to get bored. He threw his towel on the floor, causing Catherine to angrily pick it up. She went into the bathroom and saw that Mike had stained everything with his green crayon. She tried to clean it up, then went back to the room to apologize to Mike. She admitted that it was harder than she had thought, and Mike agreed with her. Catherine encouraged him, saying they had just twenty days left. Soon after, they found a gun in the bathroom, and they were both confused about how it got. Catherine told Mike to get rid of it, and they planned to use the laundry chute, but they were informed it was for clothing only. Catherine then felt they were just being messed with. They decided to hide the gun and try to forget about it. They received a message from a family member through Connect. It was Mike's sister, who was confused about why her brother had locked himself in a room for money when he couldn't even stay in college because he was bored. She questioned if this was a detox from Catherine, and said that leaving Catherine was the right thing to do. She mentioned that she was in France doing her practical, and said she missed her brother. She told him to be kind to himself, and let things go. Catherine also received a connection from an old man who seemed to be her father, but Catherine said she didn't want to connect. She began to panic and failed to listen to the man, even though he said he was off the streets and living in a shelter. Mike, confused, asked who the old man was, but Catherine stayed in a corner and began to cry. The connection ended, and Mike went to hug her as she cried. The next morning, Catherine woke up feeling sad. She didn't go to the bathroom first, as usual. She refused to get up and said the man who called earlier was her father, and she hadn't seen or heard from him in years. She then confessed to Mike that she had lied about her father because she was ashamed of him. He had drunk away their house, her school fees, and every chance of her growing up as a normal person. Catherine continued, saying she hadn't expected to see her father at the homeless shelter, and seeing him brought up feelings she thought she was done with. Mike told her he loved her, and said nothing more. They now had nineteen more days left. Mike grew bored and began reading his clothes aloud, memorizing them. He also started whistling and doing strange things while Catherine remained in. Mike went to her, tried to make her laugh, but failed, so he decided to cuddle with her. They stayed that way until evening. Mike struggled to fall asleep at first but eventually fell asleep on the ground. The next morning, he woke Catherine, who still seemed depressed. He tried to talk to her, reminding her they had eighteen more days of nothing and suggested she take a treat. She rejected it, saying she was fine. Mike then confessed that he didn't think he could continue. Later that day, Mike played with his food and dumped it on the ground. Catherine told him to take another treat, but he told her to take it instead. She said she didn't want a treat and advised him to take it. He agreed and took the treat while Catherine went into the bathroom for her daily affirmation, but she was unable to do it. While Catherine was in the bathroom, Mike took the treat, and a naked woman, Simone, walked in. Catherine came out of the bathroom to see Simone with her boyfriend. Mike tried to explain, but Simone acted like she knew nothing about them. She claimed to be an actress and said her agent got her the gig without providing many details. She mentioned that she had been booked for a month. Mike gave Simone his shirt to cover herself. He told her she didn't have to wear it if she didn't want to. After putting on the shirt, Simone said the room reminded her of a dance studio she used to go to in Paris. She then asked Mike if he danced. Mike replied that Catherine danced and then asked Catherine if she wanted to dance. Catherine rejected his offer. Mike pleaded with her again, saying he didn't know his next treat would be a woman. Catherine seemed a bit jealous and said it was Mike's treat before walking over to the bed. Simone started a conversation with Mike about his drawings on the wall. Catherine called Mike over to her side and asked him how everything would work out with Simone. Mike assured her that it would be fine and that it was cool. Catherine expressed her distrust of Simone, questioning whether she was really an actress. As they were trying to talk things out, the lights went out, suggesting it was evening. Mike called for Simone to join them and suggested that the ladies sleep on the bed while he slept on the floor. Simone thought it was a crazy idea since the floor was concrete and said she would stay awake hoping they would free her soon. Hearing this, Catherine suggested they all sleep on the bed, as it would be silly if Simone just walked around all night. Catherine went to the bathroom, and Mike followed, suggesting he should sleep on the floor, but Catherine refused. They all ended up sleeping on the bed, though Catherine wasn't very happy about it. The next morning, 
Catherine woke up to find Simone wasn't on the bed and saw Mike's clothes lying there. She thought Simone had left and walked over to the bathroom, where she found Simone, who had just finished her bath. Catherine seemed annoyed that Simone hadn't left yet. After her bath, Catherine saw Simone and Mike talking and laughed. She then announced that she wanted to take a treat. Catherine's treat turned out to be ecstasy. She used some and passed it to Simone, who then gave it to Mike, even though Catherine was against it. Mike decided to use it after some contemplation. As the ecstasy took effect, the room began to spin. The ladies hung out together, dancing and playing with their hair, while Mike did his own thing. He started to hallucinate, feeling like he was drowning. The ladies woke him up, telling him he was hallucinating. Mike screamed that he saw Sean underwater. He began to cry and wanted to push the button, but they stopped him. Catherine tried to remind him about the prize money, but Mike cried and said he didn't care about the money. Catherine managed to calm him down as he cried and said they shouldn't be there. After calming him down, Mike went to sleep while Simone asked Catherine who Sean was. Catherine told her that Sean was Mike's brother, who drowned when Mike was supposed to be looking after him. Sean fell into the pool when Mike walked away, and Mike, who was high, went into the pool after him. Simone then asked Catherine how she and Mike met. Catherine recounted that they had met at a park on a rainy day when she had no umbrella. Mike had asked if he could catch the raindrops for her. In the evening, Mike went to talk with Simone. They discussed Sean, and Simone shared her own story about how her mother died when she was twelve and how she hadn't been able to move on. Simone then asked Mike what he was doing in the Immaculate Room. Mike talked about how love should be the only thing pursued. Simone questioned how much love the prize money could buy. Catherine woke up to find Simone and Mike holding hands and talking. She wondered what was going on and thought Simone was trying to seduce her boyfriend. Mike begged Catherine to relax, saying they were only talking. This led to a full-blown argument. Simone thought Catherine was insecure and asked that Catherine's insecurity not taint Mike. Catherine later apologized after Mike walked away, and Simone taunted her. The next morning, Catherine woke up to find that Simone had gone. Catherine walked back to the bed to tell Mike that Simone was gone. Mike said he didn't feel okay. Catherine walked toward the door and called Mike to show him something Simone had written on the walls about Mike making love to her. Mike was confused and said they had never had anything together. Catherine began shouting that Simone looked like Mike's ex. Mike tried to calm her down, saying it was just the room messing with her. They had another argument, and in her anger, Catherine pushed Mike to the ground, causing him to hit his head on the concrete floor. He started to bleed and asked her if he had ever been unfaithful to her. Mike told her everything he had done to make her happy and said she was just jealous. He insisted that they needed to get out of the room. Catherine picked up a towel and placed it on his head, then gave him their food to drink. Mike said he needed a doctor, but Catherine didn't want to leave yet and tried to convince Mike not to leave. She tried to lean him against the wall while Mike looked at her and said she didn't care about him. He asked her how far she would go, as she was allowing him to bleed out for money. Catherine argued that this wasn't true. Mike then told her to leave the room with him, trying to explain the evil the room had done to them. Catherine reminded him that they were so close to finishing. Mike continued to argue, insisting they had to leave. Mike told Catherine that the Immaculate Room was a test of both their money and their spirits, and they were failing. Catherine said they didn't have to throw away the money to prove their love. Mike insisted it was wrong and said they needed to leave. Catherine still refused to leave. Mike decided he would leave with or without her. Catherine screamed that Mike couldn't leave. As he reached for the button, Catherine drew out a gun and told him to stop. She said they had to stay and that it was wrong for him to throw away millions of dollars. She screamed at him, saying he was ruining everything. Mike told her it was over and proceeded to press the red button. He managed to press it and escape the room, leaving Catherine alone with the one million dollars in prize money. As he left... Catherine dropped to the floor and began to cry. Alone in the room, Catherine struggled with boredom and despair. She had nine days left until the end of the competition. Her crying had intensified, and with only two days remaining, she was tempted to press the red button and end everything. The scene shifted to Mike jogging in the evening. He saw Catherine coming out of the homeless shelter where her father was staying. They recognized each other, and Catherine apologized for everything she had done in the room. Mike also said he was sorry. Catherine explained that she was visiting her dad, and Mike walked her to her car. He asked if she had won the money, but she didn't answer. Instead, she asked about his sister, and if he was still painting. On the door of the homeless shelter, a sign read that a new kitchen had been made possible by an anonymous donor. This indicated that Catherine had indeed won one million dollars. In the final scene, another couple, Sandy Williams and Jason Wright, entered the Immaculate Room. Just like Catherine and Mike, they were welcomed and told they could win $5 million if they completed the task. 
The couple seemed very happy about the opportunity.